Hi, I'm Emma Lubici, the creative director here at Heartfelt Creations. Today I'm excited to share with you some techniques you can use on the Classic Editions collection along with our new paper collection. This is our very first paper release, so we're going to get started by showing you some of these exquisite papers. So this is how it looks when you purchase it. It comes in a paper pack. There are 24 papers per pack. There are two per design and these sheets are double-sided. They are acid and lignin free. Some of our designer comments have been that they're so exquisite, they're too beautiful to work with, and the quality is outstanding. Um, I might be biased, but I think it's the best there is. These are also made in the USA, so that's also great. Um, we're going to switch to the individual papers so I can show those to you better. Um, this is the first sheet that you will be seeing in the pack. This is kind of a berry um, doorway and the opposite side is more plain so if you don't like the front side you can use the back side. Then we're going to move over to the truck, the classic truck with some leaf spray. The background is a dark neutral olive. Um, it has some swirls and, and things like that. Then we have this amazing border. It has a blue, red, orange, yellow, and green strips in it. The background is a, has a nice orange swirl. Then we're going to move on to the red. It's kind of like a neutral fall flower with a red background pattern. And then the back side is just like a neutral, neutral okra um, background. This is one of my favorites. It has a cornstalk with the wagon and some swirls. It's fun to load the wagon with all sorts of pumpkins and florals. And then we also have this um, background with a little bit of shading around the edges. So these are great because you can use them very neutral, the very neutral sides, or you can use them um, for different background papers on your layouts. So they're great for card makers and scrapbookers. This is a, a, one of my favorites. These patterns, I like to cut the strips apart. The back side has a, a nice red. So even though, the, even though these are fall inspired, they are great to use throughout the year. These are some of my favorites. You could switch this around, use it various ways on your layout. It's a berry and floral swirl cluster. There are actually two of these, so you can use it as a double page layout. And then the background of these are very neutral. They're very similar in the background. And then we have a corn husk with, or a corn shock with pumpkins and a larger flower. And the background of this one is kind of a green yellowish background with some of the white flowers more in a neutral tone. And then we've got these pumpkins. These are great because these pumpkins actually coordinate with the uh, pumpkin dye that we have in the classic edition set. This background has more of a purplish green neutral background color. To finish it off, we've got our what we call our journaling blocks or small squares for cards. These mimic some of the larger designs on the layouts, so you can cut these apart. I like to stamp sentiments on the inside and add a larger image with it. So this is all colored, you can add a little bit of glitter to it. The back side is neutral, so you can cut those apart, stamp sayings, or use it as a journaling block. This is the HCD 724 Classic Editions die. There's a vintage truck, a pumpkin, some leafy sprays, a pine cone, and a wagon in this die set. And this die set coordinates with the following stamps. Um, these are all in this collection. This is the berry pomegranate with some sprays and the pine cone. Um, this is the raspberry set. This is great for backgrounds or focal points. And then we've got this pumpkin spray with flowers and the individual pumpkins that can be cut out with the die. We've got the wagon, the tree, and the corn shock in this set. And this is the truck with the dogs and a little pumpkin with the flower. And then last but not least, we've got the fillers. This is a basket, the tree, and these are little flower toppers for the basket, or I use it in the back of the truck. So now we're going to switch and show you some of the samples that we have created with these images. So this is a layout featuring the new paper and the stamps and dies. And I love the fact that the, basket, or the wagon is loaded up with pumpkins and flowers. I used the journaling block over here on this side and added a title and added some glitter to the corn shocks. 
And then moving along, we're going to show you a bountiful autumn card. And what I really like about these papers is the fact that after you've, when you're working with these, the um, cards are done so much quicker because if you have the coordinating papers, you can have the pack right by your side and you don't have to run around your crop room trying to figure out which papers coordinate it. So it really speeds up the design process when working with the coordinating papers, stamps, and the dies. I love this one. This was the old door out of one of the papers with the flower basket or the basket with the apples on top. I'm always calling this a flower basket. I guess it's doomed to be a flower basket. <laughs> so we're going to move along to the wagon. This is one that Linda created. It's a shock and then she added the autumn border on top. This I thought was a really cute concept. It has the little tree in a basket. This would be such a simple Christmas card. I love this one. This is our screen door. We've actually come out came out with this quite a long time ago. But um, she actually put a screen in there, added the little tree in the background. And then we've got the truck. I love the truck. It's interactive. This door actually opens up and you could actually add a photo of somebody back there and then I added the flower mount in the background with some flower soft and the tree has some spring flower soft on it as well. And last but not least, we have our little wooden wagon with the journaling block stamped the sentiment. So the next thing I'm going to show you is how I colored this wooden wagon and how to add some quick glitter to our new decorative papers. So to color this wagon, I stamped it in a dark brown chalk ink and I'm using a Tombow blender along with the, the chalk ink. This is a very quick way to color and I will just dip into my ink and I will just color off a little bit on the side of my scrap paper. This enables me to see how much ink saturation I have on my blender. So we'll just blend that color out on the wagon and then I'll go back, hit the ink pad again and I'll just add some darker areas in there. Brush off on the side a little bit, pull that out. So that, again, this is a Tombow clear blender pen and just using the same ink that I stamped the wagon with, very quick and very easy to color with. So you'll just continue adding some dark spots in there and you'll just do this all the way around. Just tap off on the side if you're not sure how much ink you've got and then just kind of spread that out. It's just a quick way to add some good detail without spending too much time with it. So we'll just continue that all the way along. So you continue that on the wagon until it would be complete. And then the next thing I'm going to show you is how to apply the glitter to some of our new paper packs. For the glittering technique, I like to use my Dries Clear Glue from Art Glitter and it has a very fine tip on the top. And I cut out and selected one of my journaling blocks. Um, so we're going to lay this down and trace along the journaling block to create a glittery piece that we can use for our cards or our layouts. With the detail of this tip, you can actually write with it. Um, I use this all the time to quickly add glitter to background paper, so it's a very fun technique to do. So I'm just following the swirls on this pattern. If you have a large area to cover, you can put some glue on and then sprinkle your glitter over it, tap it off and continue the gluing process. Um, but this one's a small enough area that I just have to, um, I can add all of my glitter on first or a glue on first and then add my glitter. I just added some glue in the flower centers and I think that's all the glue I'm going to add to this one. You could choose to go along the outside and outer edge of the design but we're going to add the glitter. Okay, so I'm using a honeydew glitter. It's a kind of an orange transparent glitter. And you know what? I'm thinking this bottle might be new. <laughs> so this means that this is the first time we're using it. Oh, I love glitters. We have drawers and drawers full of glitters. They're so much fun 
and um, I just tell people that glitter is a sparkly dirt. If it comes on your counters, and I said I'd rather have sparkly dirt. Oh, I sprinkle some on the side. This little spoon's supposed to keep my mess on the inside, but I guess it doesn't. This is actually the first time I'm using this little spoon, so I thought I'd try it out and see how it works. But I see it is a little bit messy if you're not careful. But if you target your areas carefully, it'll fall right back into your jar, and you don't have to use a tidy tray. Or if you're like me and you made a mess, you can always put a piece of paper on the underneath it and it'll catch it. But you can see in just a matter of minutes, you've got this very beautiful glittery piece that you can stamp and you could do something similar to what I did on this card. This one I just added the drawing block and added a background piece to anchor it and then I added the little wagon on the bottom. You can fill it with anything you like. It has been so much fun showing this new paper collection and the classic edition collection. So I hope you're very inspired. Visit us on our website at heartfeltcreations.us for more ideas in our gallery and on our blog. Until next time, happy stamping and scrapbooking.